I will ask a dumb question, but uh, how many of us have used today uh, hot water or like drinkable water? I'd say everybody. And uh, how many of us have used electricity? We are using it now. Internet or yesterday we came by by car through a, a nice uh, forest that I learned. There is a single forest in, in the entire country. So the point is that uh, today we need the huge amount of uh, services. So today's society requires a huge amount of resources, food, uh, communications, transportation, energy. And all of these resources need to be supported by some infrastructure. And of course, this infrastructure needs to be maintained for security reasons, obviously, and for preserving the operation, right? So as you will see, the link to um, all of this uh, infrastructure maintenance uh, nowadays a trend is to use uh, optical fiber to to maintain all of this uh, uh, preserve all of this operation so optical fiber is uh, for those of you that do not know about it for sure uh, everyone knows about it uh, so it's a very unique um, uh, device it's a very unique element that is made of a widely available uh, material which is silica very inexpensive is very light it is uh, intrinsically immune to electromagnetic interference it is flexible it can allow miniaturization of uh, devices and then the, the part that is uh, really important to me is one that is it allows uh, uh, communication transportation of information through really long distances, we have subsea cables, uh, transoceanic cables, transporting all of our internet and phone communications. And the second is that it's also sensitive to uh, some magnitudes like strain or temperature, pressure, uh, vibrations. So this is probably not so well known. So I just want to give you a comparison of the technological approach for sensing infrastructure. So. Let's take a look at this infrastructure that we have in the picture. So a huge linear pipe transporting water, uh, gas or whatever material. With the traditional way of, uh, of uh, measuring it, we would deploy several sensors along the structure. Every sensor will have some cable, uh, some configuration, some connection. We nowadays have uh, uh, wireless sensor networks, but those also need powering and the scalability of this sensing network is limited, obviously. So what we propose here is the use of a single optical fiber to make what it's known as distributed optical fiber sensor. So the single optical <coughs> fiber deployed along the structure brings information every certain length <coughs> about what is happening in the, in the, in the structure. So if it's uh, uh, heated, cooled, or strain or there is some ground movement and by accessing this fiber at the at the one of the ends and placing the interrogation <coughs> unit we can retrieve all of this information without modifying the properties of the of the fiber so it's pretty uh, pretty amazing from my point of view so how does this uh, briefly work i don't want to just shoot you with the the, the theory but uh, i think Mati will explain a little bit the the principle of this awful uh, awful name system right so basically what we do is that we launch into the fiber some uh, pulse beam of light and what we see is that the, the light interacts with the media through some scattering phenomena and so there is some part of the light that is going back and we collect it and we analyze it in a time domain since we know how much time it takes for this pulse of light to go back and forth we, we can track time and distance so we can perfectly locate events in in the in the distance along the fiber and there are several uh, scattering phenomena that uh, allows us to measure the most uh, uh, widely known is the Rayleigh scattering this is uh, for for those of you do not who do not know this is the phenomena that makes the the sky look blue in the at noon and the red ish at sunset right so this is a scattering phenomena that happens at the same frequencies as the incident light. But we are also interested in at other scattering phenomena that happens at different frequencies than the incident light. So there is Brillouin scattering and Raman scattering. So this Brillouin scattering, we can use it to measure temperature or strain. 
So I will explain that this, this curves happening uh, to change the position regarding of the state of the fiber, right? And Raman, it's widely used for temperature sensing only. So just briefly, just to highlight how it works, uh, don't bother all the, the, the numbers and so on. So we have a fiber, we have light interacting in the fiber. And in Brillouin scattering, we have some uh, characteristic frequency of this uh, scattering process that manifests, let's say, 10 to 11 gigahertz. Don't bother the, the number. The point is that if there is some cool event in the fiber, this curve is shifting to lower frequencies. And if there is a hot event or there is a strain in the fiber, there is a, a positive, so the, this frequency is uh, increased. So the important fact is that this uh, frequency is linearly dependent with the strain and temperature. So it's extremely useful for sensing applications. So what we do normally is that we scan the whole fiber, we send the light into the whole fiber and retrieve this kind of profile. So what we can see is a typical, this is the curve at the beginning of the fiber and this is the, this curve at the end of the fiber. We retrieve this kind of mountain. We have frequency in this axis, distance in this axis. And this uh, mountain, the peak of this mountain reflects the, the, um, the response of the fiber, right? So if there is some hot event, what will happen is that we will see, at some point, we will see some shift. And by measuring the distance between uh, this peak and this peak, we can retrieve how much the fiber have, has been heated. So it's pretty straightforward. The typical performance of this kind of sensors is uh, 50 kilometers, right? So with a single fiber of 50 kilometers, we can scan uh, every two meters, two to five meters, um, uh, temperature, strain, or pressure, it depends on the, on the properties of the fiber. So that means 25,000, at least 25,000 sensing point, virtual thermometers in a single cable. And you do it without modifying the cable, which is an important fact. We can determine the temperature with one degree minus, uh, plus minus one degree uncertainty. And for the scanning of these 50 kilometers, it only takes one, two minutes. So it's pretty fast. So, as I said, at Infotech, we have the, the, the unique specialty that we can fabricate fibers, our own fibers. So we can tailor fibers for the specific application. And if we want to uh, operate in harsh environments, really low temperature or high temperature, uh, from minus 200 to 900 degrees, we can also uh, post-process and prepare fibers with some special coatings, like the, the, the zoom picture that you see in here. It's a metallic coating, so the fiber is no longer covered with this um, uh, polymer coating, but with some uh, metallic coating, so to make it resistant. And as you can see here, it's demonstrated how it works with a, with a lighter, with actually the lighter at uh, pretty high temperature, more than uh, 900 degrees at the, at the tip. Right? And the, I don't know if you see it, but there's still light going through the fiber, so the fiber is uh, working perfectly. <laughs> So how do we combine these special fibers with this sensing scheme? So we can use it for measuring industrial processes, so high temperature industrial processes. So we deploy a single, single optical fiber through the structure of interest. And it is important to say that we can scan this, um, uh, this structure of interest really remotely. So let's say there is a harsh environment here, presence of uh, flammable gases, really high temperature, the, no operator needs to be in the surroundings, there is no need to place this uh, interrogation unit close to it, so we can scan it uh, remotely, and uh, we can do it all the structures simultaneously in, in real time. So this is only a, just to show you a, an example of what we did. So we were monitoring the um, uh, high temperature furnaces, as you can see in the in the scheme on the right on the right hand side, I cannot disclose uh, totally the information about this because of a uh, customer confidentiality. Um, but the the idea is that they had some furnace made of uh, this high resistant uh, bricks, and they were actually um, stopping the production of the furnace every let's say three years because periodically they stop, they go, they empty the whole furnace, they go inside the. The operators go inside, they inspect, 
and they say, okay, it's good, okay, it's not. But if it's not, all right, it was a right call, but if it's good, they stop the production for no reason. So the idea was to cover the whole, um, the whole uh, furnace with optical fiber, with this uh, uh, high temperature uh, optical fiber, metal coated, and this is what you see in the left hand side picture, they're placing the fiber buried in the structure. And we were able to measure temperatures for 400, 500 degrees continuously. So this helps them identify if there is some brick that is leaking and do predictive maintenance. So it's strongly reducing the cost of, uh, of maintenance. So this system allows them to measure 24 seven. It reduces the, the necessity of uh, like hand, uh, human made uh, inspection. So the system is autonomous and can give uh, an alarm wh whether there is a, a high temperature or low temperature at certain location. And hence it reduces, as I said, the, the cost of maintenance. So just to uh, show you another example of what we can do with fiber. As I said, this is only several examples. There is uh, tons of different of them. So what you can see in here is the, is the use of optical fiber sensors, distributed temperature, um, optical fiber sensor for measuring a coal waste pile. So in the region of Porto, in Portugal, in 2005, um, an old uh, mining facility, so you know in, in mining facilities they, they extract the material and they leave the, they stack, stack the, the, the leftovers of the materials in some big mountains. So this uh, mining facility was uh, an operative since 1973. And in 2005, the, there was a thunderstorm striking in the, in the area. And the ground that you can see in here start, started combusting. So the soil was burning at a temperature of 200, 300 degrees Celsius. And not only that, but as you can see in here, there was already uh, forests around, trees that were totally burned. And this is also emitting some really harmful gases. So it's a pretty... Uh, dangerous uh, area and uh, as you can see in this picture this area is only uh, 100 meters away from residential area so it's really really dangerous so what they asked us is to deploy some fiber and this is what you see in this yellow line this uh, yellow line this uh, snake shape uh, fiber deployment and this what you can see on the right hand side picture the fiber cable uh, high temperature fiber cable deployed there to measure the temperature and uh, provide them with some, oh, 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 sorry, provide them with some uh, real information of what was happening in the ground. So this is a readout of our system. So here we provide them with the temperature distribution along the entire structure, and this helped them build a 3D temperature mapping that helped the geophysicist uh, to estimate what was the best uh, approach. So. For them, actually, they expected there was there would be some hotspot in this area, but it turned out to be in this area, showing more than 300 degrees Celsius. So this helped them uh, actuate and prevent uh, the fire from from moving. So just uh, to sum up, I just wanted you to see briefly how the optical fiber sensors can work and what they can do. They can, do, um, uh, they can be used for long range and also short range and high resolution sensing of vibrations, temperature, strain, you name it. And as I see it, but that, uh, again, I'm a bit off topic of the forestry industry, as I see it, uh, they could be used for perimeter control in forest. They could be used in, for uh, optimizing uh, biorefineries, so optimizing the process of, of every part of the biorefinery. They are used already in landslide prevention, so you can deploy a cable of fiber and protect the, the ground from moving, so you can early, early advise it. You can also use it for fire, uh, fire detection, early fire detection. If, uh, if there, is a, there are many optical fibers that are already deploying, uh, deployed in the ground, so they could be used for this purpose. And also, why not for... Uh, turning to the, to the next level of the agriculture, right? So to help the agriculture um, uh, make more efficient uh, processes, track temperature, track humidity, and uh, in the end, 
be more efficient in the, in the way they work. So uh, that's all from my side. Thank you. I hope there will, there will be some, some interesting questions. Thanks. Very, very interesting talk Thanks. and uh, very good market niche. So, and the question is like, so for this forest application, for this perimeter sensing and uh -huh. fire detection, so uh -huh. you are measuring this brilliant scattering frequency shift and by the temperature increase. So the question is how sensitive should be the, this optical fiber sensor? For instance, you have a sensor which is attached to ground or to a tube you have shown. Yeah. For how distance to each side it's sensitive to? So how, how far from the real event? Yeah, uh, how far it from real event you can measure? So it, it depends. So let's take f talk first about the perimeter control. So that is usually not based on brilliant scattering, it's based on Rayleigh. And uh, what you measure there is uh, the acoustic, uh, acoustic vibration, so the acoustic wave uh, hitting the, the, the fiber. So any acoustic wave, pressure wave, uh, on the on the ground or if the fiber is hanging will be detected and actually uh, the sensitivity of this system is uh, you are able to detect a person walking if the fiber is buried five to ten meters away in the in the in the ground in the soil if the fiber is in a fence for example it's much more sensitive so you can detect a, a human being walking but at this distance but that means that if the event is more energetic, like there's a car going or uh, some heavy uh, animals, some pack, there is uh, a higher probability that you can detect. That is regarding the uh, perimeter control. But then regarding temperature, it is also depending on the dynamics of the, of the material where the fiber is in, embedded. So if it's in the ground, of course, temperature dynamic is uh, a bit slower than the uh, pressure waves moving in the, in the soil. But you can detect it uh, tens of meters away from it. Of course, you cannot determine the same uh, at the same time. There is a hot spot here, and the fiber is there. You will it will reach it at some time, and probably it will degrade the temperature a little bit. But it is quite quite sensitive. Yeah. And about this relay scattering. So, what are the particles the light is scattering on? That it's a relay scattering. What what, what are the particles? The fiber structure. So is uh, the the fiber structure. The core of the fiber is not homogeneous. So the imperfections of the fiber structure itself are the ones that are uh, scattering light, actually. Very small ones. Yeah, yeah, small. Uh, Jorke Hutton from Opatec. Uh, so is it single mode fiber you are using? It is. It it could be single mode or it could be uh, multi mode, depending on the on the sensing technology. For Raman, for example, it's usually multi mode, but for Rayleigh Brillouin, for temperature vibrations, it's single mode. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So, uh, are you drawing the fiber yourself? We are drawing the fibers. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, just to clarify, what is the distance you can measure uh, in in the fiber? For example, for temperature, how long can you reach in the fiber? So, 50 kilometers is uh, standard distance, and you can track. At 50 kilometers, you can have information every two meters of the fiber, right? So, um, let's say the maximum range. It's not 50. The state of the art it, it's a bit higher, but for commercial applications, it's around 50 with two meters plus resolution. So very interesting talk. So I, I need to ask that when you are putting this fi fiber around the ground or some other hash places, yeah. so how uh, how easily it's broken or how easily is it going uh, down? It's usually the fiber by itself never goes uh, as it is by itself. It usually goes with some protective cabling. So sorry, um, uh, it depends. So for example, in the case of high temperature. It goes inside also a, a metallic tube, so the fiber uh, mechanically is protected, right? If it's a, for the case of the of the um, furnace measurement, it also goes into a metallic tube. For vibration sensing, 
it doesn't need to go into, uh, it depends if it's vibration in a normal environment. It's usually several layers of uh, uh, polymers, Kevlar, and some more uh, polymers to, because usually the fiber is deployed in the, in the ground, so there is animals that want to go and eat it, so you need to protect it. But the fiber, uh, in that case, is, it's pretty resistant. Okay, also in this industrial uh, point of view, so that mm -hmm. it's possible to use in industry applications. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, th this is what we, th we, what we are doing, actually. And it only requires a, a special uh, protection of the fiber, that this is what we do, and a special, uh, special cabling. Uh, but we also, we're also doing this. We have our partners uh, doing cables for us. So, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is not only a, let's say, uh, visionary example. This is a real, real case we we are doing. Yeah, it's uh, Sheikh Mohammed. I am from Uni Eastern Finland. So I was wondering, like the the cost of deployment, like how much it costs per kilometer or per meter or what's a unit, and for large scale, because you mentioned so so time is the cost that it save cost for the yeah. for the customers. So. Yeah, it, it is actually a very nice question. When we approach any customer, they are kind of uh, somehow shocked by the ranges of prices of the interrogation units, etc. It's uh, several tens of thousands of euros. Uh, but if you think about the cost of um, the cost per per sensor per sensing point, it's totally reduced. So. You don't need to have so many uh, sensors deployed, so the labor cost to deploy those uh, those sensors is minimized and also less operation. So the fiber by itself, I think the, the standard price right now, single mode fiber is about 70, 60 cents per, per meter. Uh, so that's not a high, a high cost. Obviously, if you want to deploy uh, 50 kilometers, it's, uh, it turns higher, right? But if someone is interested in, in measuring such high distance, it means that the asset is uh, valuable uh, quite a lot. So it's always a, a trade-off uh, of the the cost, the cost per sensing point, and uh, the whole solution with other electrical sensors, etc. It's much more higher with the with the other kind of uh, sensing schemes. <laughs>